Hello, everyone. So um, before I describe this Leaflet plugin, I should describe what Leaflet is. And I'll be quick. I'm sure a lot of you already know. Um, it's a JavaScript library for easily creating web maps. That's an example. You see the code below. Uh, really that simple. Uh, Leaflet was created in Ukraine. Uh, I encourage you to follow um, Ukrainian developers on Twitter uh, and listen to their stories. What is GeoRaster Layer? Uh, it's a plugin for Leaflet, among many great plugins, uh, for displaying geo-referenced images, for example, cloud-optimized geotiffs. GeoRaster Layer is built from the ground up to be memory safe, which means it won't crash your browser. It can display geotiffs that are hundreds of megabytes. It has a bunch of features. I'm going to go over um, four of the new ones, but I also want to leave time for questions because I'm sure it's going to get um, I have a good conversation. So the, the first um, problem that we've solved recently um, is the earth is not flat. Uh, it's, I really wish it was. GeoTIFF files can come in thousands of different standard projections. Um, and that's really good because it preserves the quality of the data. For example, you could have a land cover data set for the whole world, which would be in um, 4326. Uh, and then you can see that um, you might have polar ice caps in um, UPS or, or Landsat in UTM, um, really thousands of, of these. I was just like manually creating these icons, so I didn't want to create a thousand. So uh, one of the options for uh, reprojection, um, when, when you're visualizing, so your TIFF might be in uh, universal polar stereographic, uh, or that's not a good example, um, maybe like UTM and you're trying to display it on a web mercator map, uh, you need to reproject it. Uh, and so one of the options is to fetch uh, projection information uh, from EPSG uh, .io, which is, is really amazing. Uh, there's actually an example on open layers documentation on how to do this, uh, and it, it, it really works. Um, but GeoRaster Layer leaf, for Leaflet's a library that is used in a bunch of applications. Uh, so it, it would, um, if each of those uh, applications that's using the Leaflet plugin makes a call to epsg.io, uh, it might um, like overload uh, the service, especially if everyone comes out of this wanting to, to use it. But if you don't, then we're fine. Uh, so um, the solution uh, that we have here uh, is epsg.io uh, actually has a Docker container. So you can just pull that down locally and uh, create create like a CSV or some sort of um, file that has all of the projection information. Uh, this isn't including datum grids, uh, but just like the, the core projection strings. Uh, and then we're going to compress it. We're going to just uh, really uh, lower the file size uh, using a JSON of code compression. Uh, JSON of code compression uh, basically uh, converts, um, creates JavaScript code that will create whatever you give it. So it's easily integrated into JavaScript projects. And then we're going to embed it in the geo raster layer for leaflet package. And you can too. So if this sounds like fun, uh, you should uh, try it out and import the Proj4JS definitions uh, to embed projection information in your own project. Uh, I also expect people have ideas on 
like 100 other ways to, to solve this problem, and I look forward to the Q&A. So problem number two, and this question's for the audience. Um, so I hand you a pixel, and its value is 10,000. Uh, what color should it be? Who, who wants to take a stab at this? <laughs> yes, I love the positivity. Um, so uh, what information would you want? Like what questions would you want to ask in order to decide what color in grayscale um, you should choose for a value of 10,000? Yes. So um, someone said min-max. Yeah, and then look at the min-max for the, the whole raster. Um, yeah, you, you guys got it. Um, so we don't have the min-max, so we're going to have to compute it while we're doing the rendering. The, the table on the right, uh, is there a microphone I can walk with? Okay, so uh, on, the, on the right, uh, we see uh, the, the history of the statistical calculations. So when we've loaded and rendered one tile, uh, we've calculated the min and max for just that tile. Okay, so we start loading our map, we're just gonna have one tile to start. And so we calculate the min and max there and you see that there's a range of 16,000 something. And so when we want to scale our value of 10,000, we're going to kind of put in a black and white uh, and it will be 40, um, you know, that color. And then when you go to tile two, you see that, oh, in this area of our image, the minimum value is lower than it was. We've never seen it this low before. Uh, so we're going to adjust our statistics and then you scale it and whoa It's gone up 10, but if you actually look at the color, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I can't really tell the difference uh, So you just keep doing that for all the tiles and at some point you reach a point where like It, it really depends on the data, but like if it's a satellite image odds are there aren't just completely random color changes uh, that um, you know, after maybe 10 tiles you've loaded, and that, and that might take up a lot of your screen. Uh, you're not going to have any big changes in the min-max, maybe none after that. I feel like Vincent wants to say something, but for the Q&A. Uh, so um, the, the second problem uh, that we solved uh, was masking. So uh, this is an example that comes from, uh, I, I, I kind of clipped some images out of Gaddis, which is um, an application from the US Department of Agriculture. It's a really amazing application. Uh, you should Google it. Um, and so I kind of just used their visualization service to kind of show what, what this means. So uh, on the, the first image on the left, that's uh, a raster that's unmasked. You can tell it's kind of slanted, so there's some interpolation going on, but the rasters are pixels, so it's got straight edges. But coastlines don't have straight edges. So um, you have this, this pixel that's kind of covering part of the coast, kind of, you know, it looks gross. So um, you do an ocean mask, which is this is a, a vector uh, polygon, and you're, you're covering up uh, the, the ocean, and it makes it look nice. But what if you have a really nice base map, and you're losing that base map by covering it? I mean, that would be such a shame, right? So I got a solution for you. And this is what we did at GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet. So we uh, converted every pixel that's outside of our sort of area of interest to um, zero in the alpha band. 
So the data is still there, just the transparency value is zero, so it's gonna be transparent and it will let the, the base map shine through. So especially for all of you who work with base maps, I mean, you wanna see your work. Uh, and this is the code for it, it's pretty simple. Obviously this isn't the, the internals, but for you to do it, um, you wanna do two things. Uh, point to your mask and then say a mask strategy that's inside or outside. So in, in this case, uh, we want to mask or hide the, the pixels outside the United States because that's such an American thing to do. <laughs> and so you can too, um, if you're, you know, you have an application, you're looking at uh, your country and you don't want to show NDVI values outside of your country, um, you can uh, apply that as well. Okay, so, um, this is uh, a, a fun one. Uh, the way web maps work is, it's, you know, slippy map tiles. Um, there's these big squares, right? But what if your geotiff doesn't take up the whole square? So, like, I mean, I can't even reach the top there. So, um, why not just grab pixels for this area? Uh, and so that's what we do, and, sorry, um, we, we, in, in the way to, uh, I guess, make this happen is, uh, to pad it. So, um, I think it's one of these ones, it's saying it's like 200 pixels from the top. So we need to pad it because if we don't, it's going to snap up to the top. Um, and we're just going to say the height and width. So, um, the phrase that I'm calling it is dynamic tile sizing, but, um, Maybe we can call it something else too. And then, so we have a roadmap. Uh, we want to improve uh, sort of the, the scaling algorithms. Uh, and we want to support a bunch of different um, geo-referenced images. And uh, czar, PM tiles, com tiles are, are really interesting. Uh, so we're, we're tracking on that. And, um, we want to explore uh, supporting that. Uh, WebGL is really performant, so we want to use WebGL when it's available. Uh, a lot of people use, well, actually, by show of hands, who here has used React Leaflet? Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so that it's, it's catching on, and, and, and more and more people are using it. And so we, we get a request to support that. So we're looking at what's like a maintainable way to do that. Uh, there's different resampling algorithms, um, like median and mode and stuff like that. And so we want to add that um, for for people who who, who uh, care about the details. And then uh, we want to move more and more CPU operations to web workers. Uh, it's nice in the winter when your computer overheats, but but not not, not good in the summer. Um, so, and then, and then what are your ideas? If you want to uh, learn more, uh, you can go to this GitHub organization. It's got GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet and other projects. Thank you. I look forward to Q&A.